Hi, my name is Jeremy Haskell I'm with JobsInTheUS.com, and we're here at the Omni Mount Washington Hotel and Resort in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, for the inaugural Strategic HR New England Conference. I'm joined now by Jason Overbook, Averbook, excuse me, uh, which is you are the CEO of Knowledge Infusion uh, out of uh, Minnesota. Right. Uh, and you gave a, uh, a keynote this afternoon talking about uh, a data-driven, uh, strategic data um, in human resources, and I was really uh, one of the key takeaways from your talk that I really liked was the, the notion that. The Workforce 2020 is going to be HR's Y2K. Mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about how you, what you mean by that. So when we think about sort of this Workforce 2020, it's not that in 2020 all of a sudden everything is going to change. It's Or the, work, the new workforce is different than the old workforce, even though they are. But it's a snapshot in time. And in 2020, we'll have five generations of people working together for the first time ever. They will be much more connected via technology, they will be much more tied to their devices, mm -hmm. like we always are today, <laughs> yep. as demonstrated by the fact I had to go check my device before I came over here. And they'll be much more looking to collaborate and network through technology, sure. like we do today with Facebook and LinkedIn, mm -hmm. than they do with a water cooler. I mean, today we already have 70% of people that work from home or work virtual more mm -hmm. than they do in the office. In the next three to four years, we're going to be close to 90% there. So the concept of Workforce 2020 just creates this tremendous opportunity for HR not to provide tools for people to do their job better, but to provide tools that actually allow HR to measure mm. engagement, mm -hmm. collaboration, and make sure that we're starting to capture these conversations that go on because the tribal knowledge that's being lost in organizations can easily be found if it's tied in through technology and data. No, absolutely. And you talk a bit about um, the difference between quantitative and qualitative uh, information, particularly with HR. What do you think is one of the biggest challenges that HR is facing now? I mean, we talk about the, the future of work and the changing workforce, but kind of with that legacy HR, what's, what's, the, what's the big road, bu uh, road bump or speed bump, rather, that's kind of help stopping us from moving that uh, ball forward? Well, I, think there's, I think there's probably three big things that, move, that uh, hurt, hurt us there in that area. I mean, the first thing I'd say is that HR is used to being exact. You know, mm -hmm. it's used to getting the payroll right to the penny. Mm -hmm. You know, and in the world that we live in today, we want to be directional. Sure. So I need to be able to say, hey, I have a good sense of what my workforce looks like, but I might not have, it might not be perfect. Mm -hmm. People always say, how do you trust the data that an employee puts in? I'm like, well, you don't have to trust it to the 100% degree, but it's better than what you have today, mm -hmm. which is more than likely nothing. So the first is, how do I start to not think of it as this science, but think of data and going forward as an art? Yes. And how do I take data and interpret it? Sure. You know, the second big thing is understanding change. And we, you know, we talk about change management all the time. I, I think that going forward in the technology world, and it, it's more about adoption and marketing. How do I get employees and managers excited to use tools, which means like, they can't do things just on a one-time basis. Mm -hmm. They have to connect them, they have to be there for them, and they have to add value to them. So it's that adoption piece of it. And the third thing is I think that HR needs to understand how to speak in business terms, not HR terms. You know, we, we give reports back that have name and address. Mm -hmm. We give reports back that say your overtime was X, but we don't tell people what to do with it. Uh, and people always say, wow, you know, the managers don't like the data or can't get the data. They get the data. We in HR have more data than we know what to do with. But if we don't actually prescribe or to push it out in business terms and actually give people prescriptive action to take on it, you can't expect them just to take it, consume it, and then hopefully take action on it. Yeah, absolutely. And you also talked a lot about how technology is now in the hand of consumers, uh, much more so than it ever has been in the past, and even more so than business. Um, what do you think is the the real opportunity there um, in terms of you, know, you talk about people who use technology on a daily basis no matter you know what they're doing they don't even think about it as being social or, yeah. or how it would go what do you think is the greatest opportunity that HR has to really take advantage of the adoption of technology within the workforce so I think the biggest opportunity is I mean I use two different variables one is to look around so like I said in the speech a few minutes ago consumers have more more technology today than businesses do for the first time ever, mm -hmm. because it's cheaper at the consumer level than ever before. So that being said, consumers are doing a lot of things that are mega cool, you know, and getting value from it more than they are from the business. So look at how consumers are using technology. Look at how people use it in their everyday lives and start to say, what might I do? But what's important about that question, and the second thing is not just put the technology there because it's cool. Yes. It has to be tied to what your business is doing. 
So if I'm a hotel, a beautiful hotel like this, I might say, wow, it would be great since this is such a massive property if I could have people connected via technology in real time and measure that a guest, Mr. Averbrook, is walking down the hall and about to get to the, the restaurant. And I have, when I get there, they say, hey, Mr. Averbrook, great to see you. I mean, how do I start to use the technologies out there that are making connections for our friends and our families in the business place? And when you think about that, you say, is that HR's job? And I'll just say, HR's job in many organizations today is about engagement. What engages workers is connectivity, is collaboration, and saying, hey, I'm with a group of people that have similar interests, similar passions, and all working towards the same goals. When HR tells me that's not their job, then I'll say they shouldn't be using these technologies. But most HR people would say, that's in my wheelhouse. Mm. Most HR people would tell you that payroll is not. Payroll, it's OK to be OK at. Yeah. But some of these collaboration and engagement topics, I have to be great. And that's going to be my competitive advantage over time. Fantastic, Jason. Thank you very much for being with us. You're us a lot of yeah, great Yeah, you're points. welcome. Thanks All a lot. Right. Take care. Take care.